everyone. Welcome back to Lennox Weekly Daily Wednesday, where we can sit back, relax, Woo-hoo! take that midweek break, talk about all the fun things we found going on in Penguin Land. I am Vince Stone, <laughs> stuck at home, like always on Wednesdays. Somebody's going to be here to run this nightmare. And Joe Bright <laughs> in L.A., keeping everything happy there. And the man on the <laughs> island. It's afternoon, evening for him, one Pedro Mateus. Hey, man. Together with you watching live, man. We're gonna jump right into it. We got a lot of stuff to do. We got a big show, and yes. we even get a little interview from Scale. Mm-hmm. Yay! Well, that's gonna be kind of interesting. <laughs> and uh, man, I've been busy. I was talking about it earlier. I'm like doing arts and crafts in the studio, like hanging stuff, putting stuff on walls, mm-hmm. ordering tables, and yeah, I'm looking forward to it, man. I, I'm really excited. Yay! No, not really. <laughs> work, a lot of work. <laughs> adulting stuff. It's stuff that needs to get done. It's either that, or I'm going to have to like use another room in the house, and this is going to start spilling out, and I don't want that cascade. I'm like, well, you know, I could just put another thing in this other room. Like, let's just do this one this way. That's going to be a thing, man. Um. Got a couple of things coming up, though. We're going to be doing a, um, if you're interested in, like, you've got MIDI keyboards and stuff like that, you want to come into Linux, I'm going to show you how to do it. But we're going to take the eBay MIDI challenge on how low can you go on something, because I don't even know if it's going to work. It's going to be a fun little video, because it's like, you know what, for five bucks, let's just see what happens. Stay tuned for that, because uh, after I get done with that, I'm working on a sub $100 podcasting kit for everyone. Nice. If you're interested in getting into streaming or, you know, doing what we do, but for a hundred bucks, it's going to be something that I would personally use, which is a big difference than what I see recommended on YouTube. Cause I, I got curious and I was looking on YouTube. I'm like, Oh, the no, 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 that's horrible. <laughs> in fact, I can see it from across the studio right now. I got a microphone that I dare say is 98% of this one. And I will say it's got better off access rejection. And it genuinely <laughs> cost one third the price. Mm. All right. Yeah. Very right? good. <laughs> this, is, this is what happens when you have audio people, not YouTubers, recommending hardware. So stay tuned yes. for that. What else do we? Oh, yeah. And what the S is NetJack. We're going to do a studio yeah. tour and explanation of uh, why that's a thing and how we use it. And uh, I'm probably going to do some ADAT stuff at some point because I wired that up to see if it would work. I know you're like, I don't care about the audio. Dude, I'm connecting devices with lasers. So tune in just for that. <laughs> so you just need the sharks now is what I'm hearing. <laughs> what do you mean need? <laughs> <laughs> okay more duct tape gotcha right <laughs> jill what's new with you man oh boy so i had a great time on linux unplugged yesterday at jupiter broadcasting talking about scale with uh, chris fisher is that why you and randomly posted a link in discord because it's like you yeah i was like you, you might want to work on throwing some context into that yeah yeah well usually it, the show had already started so i didn't have time to to be typing because I was on the air, <laughs> so I threw it in. Um, but usually, you know, I, I I say I'm I'm on right now, and I also was on um, Saturday um, on Big Daddy Linux uh, European Edition talking about scale. So that was awesome too. And I just wanted to make a comment, you know, since <laughs> since I've come back come back from the Southern California Linux Expo, and it ended. It, it's it's been amazing how much things have changed every day in our world <laughs> and it's really depressing but but stay positive and um our linux community because our, our penguins are still marching on there's still some linux linuxy goodness out there you're feeling down you're feeling <laughs> a little bad i want you to think about this you're at home you're chilling out and you're like i'm stuck at the house okay imagine if this was 15 or even 10 years ago and you barely yeah. had broadband and youtube wasn't a thing <laughs> and it could be a lot hey, of that's, netflix yeah. that's back when people finished video games you were waiting on yeah. your netflix dvd to show up and you're like oh no what will i do i can only rewatch this cowboy bebop like two more times max <laughs> Yeah. So go out, play some games on Linux and um, listen to lots of really wonderful Linux podcasts, and <laughs> including ours. <laughs> Pedro, what's new with you? Man? <laughs> well, uh, I suppose uh, I, too, have been working from home because <laughs> I guess people actually got scared at one point uh, as far as the higher ups in the NHS go. It's like, all right, uh, we just need to basically maintain a... Um, core presence on site so as long as that's maintained 
the rest of uh, everyone else can work from home. It's like, how about you just say, the building's closed, everyone works from home. I'd be very happy with that. Yeah. <laughs> very happy yes. with that. <laughs> no doubt, man. Um, the introvert in me loves this particular yeah. um, event. <laughs> 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 oh. Nothing wrong with that, man. Okay, uh, yeah. let's jump right into it with a little bit of AMD news. Because, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, this comes from Tech Radar. All this is going to be in our show notes. But AMD looks to court Linux gamers by making its GPU driver even better, man. Uh, lead Linux kernel developer needed to maintain open source graphics driver. And uh, they kind of go on a thing about how this is going to be great for gaming somehow. To which, you know, th 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 that genuinely confused me just a little bit. Simply well, because they're saying, hey, we're going to hire a person. We're looking for a person, singular, as in one. And like, well, this is going to definitely flow over to um, the gaming side, to which uh, I think, Pedro, you'll back me up on this. Uh, I don't think the uh, person who wrote this article had heard that AMD is going to be focusing on cDNA for their compute. They're mm -hmm. splitting yeah. their product stack yeah. to where they're not <laughs> going to be trying to shove everything into one card, which is good because that's what yes. NVIDIA does with their Tesla series. So. You're not trying to get mm -hmm. all the, you know, you might have more room for shaders or something like that versus, you know, CU yeah. or anything like that. But yeah, man, uh, I don't know if that's uh, really going to trickle down to our DNA, right? I mean, mm. it may because the graphics stack on Linux is Mesa. So mm -hmm. that's probably uh, if one improves, chances are, or I'm hoping that the end users will see some driver performance improvements on AMD side. And we need them uh, as someone who has uh, an RX 570 and seeing the 1650 that's on the Steam box, uh, handily curbing it in a couple of games. Not all. Uh, some of them, the RX 570 is still better. But yeah, no, that's, uh, that's a noticeable difference from the Windows mm -hmm. world. So I do hope that some of that uh, driver improvement does translate into... Um, the gaming side but n no it's like and they mentioned it's like oh the job description uh mm -hmm. work as part of the global software engineering team to design and maintain linux open source graphics stack and other software components resolve problems related to gpu device drivers including troubleshooting be, 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 be. Uh, specify design and implement software features in linux open source driver stack for amd gpu and the apu products it's like yes that comes right on the heels of amd going oh yeah CDNA, we're doing that. And as we know, OpenCL on uh, AMD cards is very, very good. That's mm -hmm. what all the miners were using them for. So yeah. improving that on Linux, now that they're focusing on compute, kind of uh, an essential thing right now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, definitely need to improve those rendering times as well. And I'm keeping my fingers crossed and hoping this this leads to more development on the direct rendering infrastructure or DRI four because DRI three is six years old and that really helps with um, accelerating um, game performance under the Mesa drivers. So this would be awesome. <laughs> Regardless, it's going to be good things for <laughs> Linux and um, yes, yeah, AMD could definitely uh, use some help. Um, well, it's yes. some improvements, <laughs> and um, especially with like that time gap we see with, you know, the the old adage of if, if you buy an AMD card, it will legitimately be faster next year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yes. there is some, some truth yeah. to that. But uh, we have a couple of other things like uh, Only Office, which uh, yeah, it's got a, new a version. lot of you. Yeah, a lot of you out there may have not heard of this one. So this is Only Office. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Pedro hadn't editors. Um, Version 5.5 is now available. And this is a great Microsoft Office alternative, which includes the ability to compare documents, a scale to fit option to make your spreadsheet fit, a printed page, which is always great, and Ooh, an easy to use, <laughs> easy to use <laughs> presentation editor. And it's just, it's nice to have another great software, um, a great software office solution in this space and focused on online collaboration. Uh, via their own only office servers or own cloud and next cloud. So you have another option to Microsoft Office and Google Docs. 
<laughs> and what's really cool is it even supports old unsupported Linux distros, including Ubuntu 12.04. And um, that was really cool. And I installed the Deb, but there is an app image, Snap, Flatpak, and even a tar.gz. Mm -hmm. and, um, and the RPMs. Don't forget and the, the RPMs. R oh, yeah. The <laughs> RPMs are great, too. Yeah. <laughs> Everything, all the things. <laughs> and um, what's interesting is those of you may remember, only Office used to be uh, Team Lab Office, which actually has been around for a while. So it, it, it did change its name. So I knew about Team that Lab. That probably and explains I, that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so they changed their name in 2014. So it, it's been around a while. <laughs> Yeah, really I had awesome. I genuinely had no idea. It's like <laughs> only Office. What? It's like, oh, yeah. it's Latvian. It's uh, AGPL v3. Yeah. Okay, that's free software. Oh, they have a deb download install. Ooh, it works. Yeah. Shiny. Yeah. <laughs> More options are better, man. This is uh, yeah. <laughs> do you use any um client side only office applications cuz I I freely admit Google Docs life is my Mhm. Mm I, I I do uh, the the yeah. uh, performance graphs that you see on the uh, the posts uh, the very few posts I've made on LinuxGameCast.com were made with LibreOffice. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I'm it, still that's using it. It's LibreOffice Libre Calc. That's the only one. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, I I usually back up my uh, Google Docs um, show notes into uh, LibreOffice just as a backup. <laughs> good, good, good. Hey. Speaking of dev packages, updated freeze policy <laughs> for Bullseye. <laughs> yeah, Bullseye, Debian, yeah. new hotness since <laughs> Debian. So, you know, air quotes around new, but they do have some freeze dates. Um, starting with, uh, let's see, soft freeze is going to be 2.12.21, and the hard freeze is going to be 3.12.21, and the full freeze is to be announced. Which I can assume will take place somewhere between, well, uh, you know, first quarter 2037, roughly. Ish. Yeah. So we'll get the, you know, Debian 11, the new hotness coming. I'm running Debian 10 on everything. And mm -hmm. I, I, I get a little snippy with um, someone in the OBS Discord because, and it was one of the uh, moderator, moderators, like, you need, they were telling somebody, you need to upgrade. Debian 10 is ancient, doesn't run anything. It's like, Good. Okay, go go ahead and explain to me exactly one thing OBS does that doesn't work on OBS uh, with Debian. Like, uh, uh, I run it genuinely on everything in the studio, so I'm not saying it's the best thing for desktop, but for like a production right now, system? it's it's more up to date. I learned this the yeah. hard way. Uh, Debian 10 is more up to date than you Ubuntu 1804. 1804. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. So. so Wrap mm -hmm. your head around that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's good. It's good news. Um, I'll be sticking with Tin until that happens. Then cautiously, uh, like trying one box at a time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Very slowly. But open source less pass. What do you use for yeah. a password man manager um, outside of Google? Hi, Google. <laughs> <laughs> I have Google and uh, Firefox. They basically mirror each other. They uh, mm -hmm. get their uh, passwords off each other. That is worth doing, and, um, whether you're on one service mm -hmm. or the other, because that's one of the reasons I set up a Firefox sync yep. for that password yeah. functionality. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and uh, I used to use uh, KeyPass, but I honestly, that database is probably so out of date that none of the passwords are current anymore, but mm -hmm. I did use that for a while, but this, this is a completely stateless password manager. You don't have mm -hmm. like a big database with all of your passwords. You have, oh, it's the horse. <laughs> Deal with it. uh, it's the, uh, no, it's the, uh, instead of having like the big uh, database, you have a little algorithm that uh, calculates um, what yeah what password you're looking for by you putting in the site uh your login name and your master password that's still the only password you need and it'll calculate the um password for that specific website that you're looking for which in my head it's like okay if this ever gets broken um 
they're going to be able to calculate everyone's uh, passwords from one of their results, uh, their master passwords from one of their results, so that may be a mm. problem. Mm. But hopefully that won't happen. Yeah. Hopefully. Mm. <laughs> but yeah, yeah no, it, it's <laughs> interesting. It, it's a different way to go at it, but yeah. <laughs> Are yeah. you saying you, you might have trust issues with this? Yes, oh. <laughs> I do. <laughs> you don't n even need to run it from their website, uh, and the yeah, it's open source, so it's you can go look at their source code anytime. But <laughs> it's kind I of can. a good idea. Oh, I, I love it. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe use it with something else. <laughs> yeah, okay, Please. no, no, I understand where you're coming from. When that, we're like, that's neat. I just don't want to. You, you, that's a to put a lot of faith in, because you got to realize in 2020, you are not in the minority if you have a gang of passwords to a ton of sites that you just don't know. They're not even <laughs> something that you could <laughs> memorize because, you know, like 32 characters or something crazy, alphanumeric, special characters, upper lowercase. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So, yeah, trusting it was something like that. Mm, I don't know. But, hey, look into it. It'll be in the show notes. Jill, you got some thoughts on it. Yeah, so I really think this is uh, brilliant. And for me, this is actually something I will use because the reason I haven't used KeyPass or LastPass in a long time is, well, I can never remember the passwords, of course. <laughs> and the need to sync devices can be a pain. <laughs> and uh, I just, I, I like that you can go to their website or for greater security, you can use a Firefox or Chrome extension or their Android app. And my favorite is they have a command line interface that works quite well. <laughs> so I was really happy about that. That's like, okay, the, having having that option, I was sold. <laughs> right on, right on. Plenty of good options, except for Google yeah. Authenticator, because you can't mm. move that from one device to the other. Um, yeah. No. <laughs> Google, what are you doing? That, yeah, I mean, you would have had me, Googs. You would have yeah. sold me on another product. But it's like, oh, no, I, I genuinely was keeping like this archaic, ancient device around because I didn't want to move everything off of it. Yeah. So yeah, I finally moved mm -hmm. to a different system. Um, okay, check this out. Up next, mm -hmm. we got a new thing. Yay. In my interfacing Linux series, where I'm showing you how to save a couple hundred bucks on your next audio interface for doing audio stuff on the internet with audio. Yeah. This is the PreSonus Fire Studio. I walk through, you know, an overview, a setup, sound check, round trip latency test. I put it through our studio session for 15 minutes to see if I can get it to explode. This one didn't. Um, mm. Then, you know, these are all bar charts and stuff like that. Then we got this fancy new thing that I've thrown in. Uh, which is just yeah. a rating scale, one to five, whether or not you should consider picking this up. You know, think about it. You can get eight in, eight out, um, 16 channels of eight out, all that fun stuff for about a hundred bucks. What, what can you get with a, like, you can get like a focus, right? I to I maybe for a hundred bucks. So up to you mix and match. Uh, do have a new one out on Patreon for patrons. This is more of a cautionary tale. I have one about the Digimax 003R because I wanted to see what a $1,200 interface sounded like. So go check that out. That'll be available for public uh, next week. But we do have that new review system in place that I'm sure Pedro is dying to take advantage of. <laughs> I didn't see it. Aww. I thought it was neat. It's like, okay, no, I need to find an excuse to use it. <laughs> we can start reviewing all types of things, man, and be like, hmm, this chocolate chip cookie. Three out of five. <laughs> Pros, cons. I think Report of the Week might have uh, something to say if all of a sudden everyone starts doing food reviews. Mm. <laughs> Linux, how can we tie Linux into it? I don't know. Just do it. <laughs> <laughs> but that is available there. Um, this is a handy application. Mm -hmm. It is. And uh, let's say you know someone who is nonverbal. It's not that they don't understand you. It's just that they'd rather not communicate using words, be it for any psychological reason or personal preference. Maybe they just prefer other means of communication. It's valid. It's fine at this point. Yeah. <laughs> so free speech, it's this little uh, bit of software. It's um, It was created 
as a way to basically introduce this kind of functionality to the operating system that doesn't involve paying two or three hundred bucks per license mm -hmm. for the software that already exists that does something similar. So um, the creator says that uh, uh, his sibling is uh, very much uh, nonverbal. So since a lot of people uh, were able to, um, well, uh, make a wish actually um, gave uh, his sibling one of their wishes so kudos yeah, major kudos that's awesome and uh a lot of a lot of people actually came back after they heard of that it's like oh uh so you have this project can we uh can we donate to it and now he did set up a couple of uh coffees ko-fis however you want to say it and uh it's yeah no it's available it's uh, it it's interesting because getting an OS to convey information without words is pretty challenging, all things considered. Yeah, it's and that's basically something. a word flow graph, which, you know, when you talk about accessibility applications, yeah. it's what's or not, they're, they're radically expensive. And because yes. there's such a very narrow, and, you know, we have things like Orca, Orca screen reader and stuff like that on Linux. Mm -hmm. But this is something that you know goes well beyond that and yeah you know, if you know somebody in need of that or if somebody's looking for some software yeah. like that or is currently you know thinking about buying that take this for a test drive because you know i love it when we can see open source solutions applied to things you know very closed market yes mm -hmm. definitely you yeah, thoughts definitely. On it, Jill? yeah so um you know as a as a teacher this this really affects me because I'm I'm having to teach students that need uh, to use software that's proprietary and very expensive, and they usually can't afford it. So I try and give them other options out there, and it's just it's nice to have to have an open source option for the nonverbal. And because um, I've had some of those students before, and it this is this is great because you know they get they get gouged. They get gouged with proprietary yeah. software. <laughs> it's an issue. <laughs> that, um, usually what happens when stuff like that is taken care of by insurance companies. So yeah, mm -hmm. they, they yeah. just ratchet it up as much as they can. Because like, well, the end user is mm -hmm. not really paying for it. So yeah, yeah, that's quite unfortunate. But hey, man, that's a good solution. Makes me happy to see that. It's kind of brilliant. Yep. We're going to hear from who was it, Jill? Uh, yeah. So this is our, our first scale 18x interview. This is with Gorg Link, PhD and Director of Sales at Baturgia. And we're also going to be hearing from Anna Jimenez, a specialist at a marketing specialist at Baturgia. This is an, a really neat company. All right. <laughs> Let's take a look. Hello, I'm I'm Jill. Bryant, of course, with Linux Weekly Daily Wednesday and the Linux Gamecast Network. And today I'm going to have a nice talk with Georg Link, who has some marvelous software, um, open source software projects that I wanted, wanted him to tell us all about and how important they are in the community. Yeah, thank you for having me on. It's a pleasure talking with you. The project that I'm most involved in is the Chaos Project. And Chaos is short for Community Health Analytics Open Source Software. And we started this project about three years ago at the Linux Foundation. Uh, because through my research at, uh, as a PhD student, I found out that a lot of organizations and communities and foundations in open source want to understand how their projects are doing. They want to understand the health of the communities behind yeah. the open source projects. And so we brought together the Linux Foundation, us as academics, Biturgia as the company that I work for now. They have developed a tool and been providing metric services around this for eight years now. So we brought everyone together and started the Chaos Project where we talk about what is community health? How do we look at this through data, through metrics? What are the metrics? What do they mean? And then, of course, built the tools to actually have those insights for open source projects. Uh, this, it, this is just something we've so needed in the open source industry is that is, is being able to you know, track the health of projects. It's such a huge need, especially in the expanding world of Linux and, and the cloud and, and AI. 
So it's especially needed. And I know another one of your clients is Uber. Um, can you tell us about um, how you've worked with them? Because that's huge. <laughs> yeah, of course I can. And you're, you're absolutely right. The, the health of open source project has been something that gets a lot of attention, especially yeah. lately since Heartbleed. And yes. uh, so having, having metrics is important. But a lot of people focus on just commits because that's an easy to get metric. And so we look at the whole spectrum of metrics, the Grimoire Lab tool, which we develop. So Grimoire Lab is an open source project or software. It collects data from 30 different data sources, GitHub, GitLab, Jira, Confluence, mailing lists, IRC, Slack, wherever the community is to get a holistic picture. And so going to Uber, that's what they were interested in. They wanted to see the projects that matter to them. Yeah. How are they involved in those communities? How are the communities doing overall? And they, they're really interested in having a worldwide um, contribution. And they noticed that they were focusing only here in North America. And then because they had objective metrics, they could steer against that and diversify their engagement in open source. That's that's really, really cool. I had seen a talk not too long ago that Uber gave at the Open Source Summit. Yeah. So and they they were talking a lot about their metrics. So that was you guys. <laughs> that was the Peturgia, yes. yes. I was not involved in the project. I joined the company later. Oh yeah. Well, thank you so much for talking with me this evening here at the, the opening day of the expo hall at Scale eighteen X. Yeah, it's been a yeah. pleasure. Thank you yeah. for having this awesome conversation. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, so we're still here at Peturgia. There's just so much good content here and people to talk with. And uh, what you're seeing right now is all the beautiful artwork, um, the, whether it be stickers or shirts, that was uh, created with open source so software by... Anna! <laughs> Anna Jimenez. Yeah. <laughs> and um, um, she's going to tell her story, how she, she moved from proprietary software like the Adobe Suite to open source. Yeah. And that's why I wanted to talk to her because, I, as you know, everyone knows, I, I teach computer animation and motion graphics and art, and I've moved all my students over to open source because the film industry is all open source now. So I'm going to have her talk about her story and her journey. Okay, thank you. <laughs> well, so I, I started uh, using uh, Photoshop and Illustrator mainly. And at the beginning it was nice because, you know, when you start to get into design, it's like that's the first thing that people tell you. Like, okay, you should be having um, Photoshop and Illustrator and that's all. But then you... I, what happens to me is that I started to discover more because I was okay with Photoshop, but somehow it was like, why do I have to uh, pay for that? And I don't know. If I I wasn't feeling really well because I I knew open source in in software industry, and it was like, okay, why I cannot actually use open source tools in in graphics in in design? So. Um, in fact, one of my co-workers tell me about Krita. That's one of the main softwares I'm using for raster graphics. And then when I discover it, I, I feel really, really comfortable because the transition from Photoshop to Krita, yeah. it's super easy because yeah. <laughs> uh, the, um, all the, the, how can I say, the, the different tools that Krita users are really, really similar to yes. Photoshop. Yeah, similar layout. Yeah, layout. That's the word I was finding. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, then I say, okay, if I'm using Krita, that's more for raster image. Maybe I can give it a try to Inkscape, because initially it's a little bit more harder. Because maybe if you are getting used to use Illustrator, it's like you don't know where the exact tools are, you get a little bit lost for that, but then once you 
you get more comfortable with it. Yeah. It's really, really good too. Yes. And it has really good results. Yes. So usually I try to, when I, for instance, make some of this artwork, the O's, things like that, I usually create these kits on Krita. And then I start with the vector graphics using Inkscape. Uh, awesome. Mm. So yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm really happy using the tools. I'm, I'm not going to quit at all. Once I discover open source in, in graphics, yes. it's amazing. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> It has just come so far. Have you used the latest version of the GIMP? Oh, <laughs> yeah. I I don't. I I've tried GIMP, but I don't use it a lot. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah. But I think it's also it's also really really good tool. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, GIMP and uh, uh, Krita and Scribus, they're all the programs that I. I I'm moving all my students to, so they, they just love it. Yeah, <laughs> actually, I think it's really important because, as you said, it's really unknown yes. that I think if you go to into the design industry, people doesn't really know all the open source tools and mm -hmm. all the benefits that it really have. Like, I don't know, if you go to any design school, yes. the first thing that it tells you is go to Photoshop and and that's the only thing you can uh, see. I, I don't know. It's, it's so annoying and I've been teaching for years and years and I actually it, before Photoshop even existed, mm -hmm. we had the GIMP. That was before Photoshop. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So and um I totally hear you, you know, with my students who, you know, they can't afford to pay for expensive proprietary software. And the benefits of it not only um, as not only does it you know replace those programs, but the the interoperability interoper of the open source projects to be able to work together is amazing. Yeah. Like you know Blender and the GIMP and um, Krita and PhotoP and all the different you know yeah, open source. In, in Krita, all the all the things that I like is that I know people that create the brushes and they say like, hey, I I've just released a new set of brushes and you can just import it. And yes. You know, you don't need to pay for them, and I don't know. Exactly. I think plugins are free. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And it's really everything is about collaboration. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. That's the beauty of open source software. So thank you so much, Anna, thank for you. speaking to me. This is great to talk to another artist working in open source. It was my pleasure. Yeah. Thank loved you it. so much. Jill. We got some people we need to think because they were like, hey, yeah. man, we like what you do and we'd like you to keep doing it. But you know what? Here's a bonus soda. Somebody gave yeah. you a little bonus, didn't they? Oh, Aldius, thank you so much. He gifted me Ark Survival Evolved, which I'm looking forward to playing with my time off <laughs> from work. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you so much, Aldius. He has uh, given us games, uh, gifted us all games before. And that's just so wonderful. <laughs> thank that's you. That's kind of brilliant. <laughs> I, I got a new thing I got to put up on the wall, though, because I, I got to write a new. Oh, look, I can almost block it out. Nope. Yeah. Nope. Hang on. Let me, <laughs> let me do this. Watch. Ta-da. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> it can finally be seen. I got solder Chen. Yay! Yeah. And, uh, I'm not weaving up, but it legitimately says Chen on the box. Yeah. <laughs> it is the uh, Yu Chan. It, it's a little digital, you know, this is not for like big projects, but this is exactly what I was thinking about. Well, something up here, because so, I'm going to, I've just made up my mind, like mentally, I, I was like, I really need that scroll wheel and some other things that I bought. Uh, Mr. Mackey for to see if I get it working. So I'm going to finish um, restoring that uh, archaic piece of kit. And this, this lets me do it just regular in the house without dragging everything out to the garage. And um, that's kind of brilliant. And the person we, who's responsible uh, for this, I saw, yeah. uh, what's his name? Louis Rosman was playing with one of these. And he's like, this is going to be junk because they're not terribly expensive. And it's like, no, these are really good. I'm like, oh, okay. Oh, all right. <laughs> and Very of course, good. it was a soldering iron. So naturally, Linux Nero was like, here. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you have that on your wish list, do you? Not anymore. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to play with it. And um, that is going to be used to uh, make Mr. Mackey whole again. Okay. 
Yeah, and awesome. It is brilliant. I <laughs> uh, do want to thank each and every mm-hmm. single one of you um, who are making this show possible um, over at patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. Your name, as always, in all of our credits as a way to say thanks. Plus, uh, get access to our Discord. Get an extra hour of our content a week with the pre pre super shows, and which also goes live an hour before uh, Linux Gamecast Weekly. If you want to pop in, say hi. We do always have IRC free, completely open, and it's tied in with Discord so mm-hmm. we can chat back and forth. And uh, we get an early crack at uh, some of the stuff that we're working on. Kind of, you know, it's like, hey, take a look at it before it goes out to the masses. Make sure we cross our T's and dot our lowercase J's. That's brilliant. <laughs> As mentioned, uh, linkscamecast.com, we got like little wish zones and stuff like that. We got LibrePay, uh, mm-hmm. PayPal, and all the other fun stuff. It is brilliant. Thank you. You are responsible for this show because it was a Patreon goal. And yeah. uh, you let us keep doing <laughs> it. That's fun. And I want to keep doing it. It's kind of brilliant. Awesome. Cool. But <laughs> let's do this stickified slice of pie. Ooh. <laughs> Wait a second. That's not an ARM CPU. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <Shh>. <laughs> Be quiet. No, man. Dude. All right. Raspberry Pi sized R1000. Yeah, Ryzen. USB 3.1. <laughs> Type C, two micro HDMI. I want one that's going to be x86 yes. in the size of Pi, and it's probably going to cost more than 200 bucks, even if they make them publicly available. Um, yeah. Dude, <laughs> it's, a, it's a 12 watt R1000. So you'll be looking at like the dual core or the, uh, what is the TDP? 3.5 gigahertz of the 1606. 3.3 of a 1505, man. See, I'm just thinking about all the stuff I can get into with this. Because what I really want to make is like a miniature jack box, the audio box back here that's uh, mm-hmm. uh, doing all of our audio processing. It's like, hmm, do they make, because it's, it's got a micro or uh, well, mini PCIe port on it too. And it's like, oh, okay. Do they make a fire? Mm-hmm. Of course. Oh yeah, one company does. Speaking of only <laughs> one company making something, I'm like yeah, it's gonna be hundred bucks. Let's see if I can adapt something. Maybe three D print the case to hold a full size card. And oh, oh, so many cool things to do with that. Are you excited about it? Maybe. Yes. Well, I'm oh, only excited I... about it if it's like, <laughs> it's, it's like one fifty or less. Uh. Ah. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, <laughs> well, I think if it hits that sweet spot around two hundred dollars, it could be an inexpensive desktop replacement, or even better, a great option for a Beowulf cluster. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, they can do the two hundred dollar um thing like that, like a desktop replacement. Those are called Chromebooks. But yes, <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yes, <laughs> but no, the fact that it is uh, an x eighty six and it's Pi sized. We've had those before, mostly from mm-hmm. Intel, uh, not so much from AMD, but it's, yeah, no, with 8 gigs around, when you posted this on Discord, it's like, ooh, that's neat. Oh, is it going to be less than 200? Not with 8 gigs around, it's not. Mm-mm. I don't know, that's <laughs> even if we can get a hold of something like this, because this might be one of those only available in quantities of 1,000. Oh, yeah. No. yeah. Uh, they'll, they'll show up on eBay. <laughs> oh, they will. Um... Just something to keep your eye out for. But yeah. uh, what do we got? Oh, man. Um, it's not l- the first uh, bit of uh, digital signage that we've had I'm trying based to, on the uh, Raspberry mm-hmm. Pi. Is it Linutop? Linutop. Or Linutop. Whatever. Yeah, it's it can run a Raspberry Pi. They also have an x86 variant. And it is, it comes packaged, uh, the teeny tiny little Raspberry Pi sized case is of course a Raspberry Pi. There's a slightly bigger one that's the x86, that's more like your nooks. But it's um, the Pi version, the full kit oh, comes... look at that, uh, it's got a nice little uh, start a home fire starter kit. And- yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it starts out at 79 euros, so in and around 100 bucks. And the big one, uh, it starts at 196 euros, so like 230, 240 dollars. Mm. And it's um, it's 
all in one. It comes with the OS. Uh, all uh, basically the there's a name of the OS in there. I guess it's just called uh, Light on Top OS. Light on Top. <laughs> yes, yeah. it is based on uh, Shubuntu. Uh, or uh, for the x86 version, or uh, Raspbian for the Raspberry Pi. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, yeah, no, it, it is a all-in-one solution that you can buy to set up a digital signage server running off of a Pi, for example. Mm. It, you pay that much, and you plug it in, and you just start loading your stuff. Uh, it creates a little server with a CMS that you can just drop whatever pictures you want on the digital signage and away you go. Mm -hmm. And that is what you're paying the premium for. Yeah. Because I know everybody listening to this is like, I could make that for 10 bucks. You you could, but you couldn't give it to grandpa and be like, here for your new little (laughs) storefront, just do this. You can figure it out. Well, another, you know, a really good alternative in this space as far as software goes is the Zeebo player, open source digital signage player. Um, I've used this before, and um, but you, of course you need to to have the the time to set it up on a device and and the hardware, but whether it be a Raspberry Pi or other other SOC. Um, so if you don't have the time, buy a Linux top. This is just easy, <laughs> very yeah, easy. It's th- all that's in the one. thing. It's like <laughs> oh, I'll buy one of them and run like the screens that I have above my counter on my store. It's like there, yeah. done. <laughs> or get get painfully creative with it um <laughs> there's a new raspberry pi imager though yeah so this is a, this is awesome this new raspberry pi imager program for is for imaging your micro sd card for the raspberry pi and it's supposed to make it a lot easier and faster to install a distro whether it be raspbian or an ubuntu image on a raspberry pi and it definitely is the ui is very simple to use and it's a lot like using etcher <laughs> so you just uh you know lo- load that up what, what they use <laughs> Yeah, or they recommended that people use. Yeah, they they recommended, but this is specifically this actually um, uh, takes the Raspberry Pi images from their server and and directly images it on onto the SD card, which is much faster than you normally do it. Of course, where you copy the ISO to the hard drive and then image it. So this uh, bypasses that step, which is wait. Really so nice. they made it where you need a persistent <laughs> internet connection in order to do it. Yes. <laughs> But you don't have to. You could still download one. <laughs> Looking at the thing, it looks like you download it first, then it images it. Mm. I was just looking mm. at the video. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. So um, when I played with it with uh, Raspbian, it just automatically um, copied it to the, the, you just, you picked it and it automatically downloaded it and imaged it. Let's see. We'll put it in an SD mm-hmm. card and <laughs> choose an operating system. Choose the SD card. Come on. Mm-hmm. Write and verify card. No. And it downloads. Uh, yeah. Man, I think they've but, they've they've and uh, then it images it. <laughs> play button. This um, Steam Play. Man, you just click a button. You stick a card in, <laughs> click a button, and All right. yeah. Done. It's, it's etcher it's it's like etcher so <laughs> one of the things you can put on it is this new hotness from the fine fun carbon based entities at canonical yes ubuntu server on a pi 2 3 or 4 running ubuntu server on your raspberry pi is easy just pick up the os image you want flash it to a micro sd card not a mini not an would be more than a mini slightly less mini SD card. Yes. <laughs> Loaded to your buy and away you go. This, uh, they have images for, yeah, 32 bit and uh, 64 bit images for the Pi 2, the Pi 3, and the Pi 4. We have 1804.4 and 1910. That's pretty cool. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't know. What would you put That's on your Pi? <laughs> well, a Benchy uh, server is a good option. <laughs> Raspbian? Just because mm-hmm. I don't have to worry about it, and I can just, I know that it's going to work. I can just start doing things. Um, Ubuntu I, Mate. <laughs> see, the only time I put anything on my Pi and put the SD card in there and run it is like if I'm angry at a particular uh, SD card and I want it to die. 
I, I, yeah, it's like an iron lady for me, man. I'm like, you know what? I've had enough of you here. <laughs> I'm a well-adjusted human being. Um, <laughs> okay. Maybe you do not like torturing SD cards, but maybe you do. And you want to tell us about it. You can always send us a note. How can they do that? Pedro? You can do that very easily. You can do that by flinging the remainders of said uh, SD card at our faces, or you can go to escapecast.com, you hit the contact button, and you fill out the form. Make sure LWDW is the show that you're sending your bit of feedback to, otherwise we may have some hate mail for that uh, Saturday foul-mouthed show, uh, What We Do. So, it, uh, yeah, no, that's actually the best way, because guaranteed that someone's going to see that, YouTube comments are a possibility. Patreons, of course, they have priority. If no, you I leave us a comment, I randomly at replied you. Somewhere. <laughs> I didn't even at reply you. I just wrote your name somewhere. And oh yeah, yeah. no, uh, that might be difficult. <laughs> okay. But yeah, no. If you're a Patreon, of course, you can leave us a comment on Patreon, and uh, if it is a, a feedback worthy comment, it will show up right here, right now. <laughs> And, Definitely uh, I guess... use the email contact form. Yes. yes. <laughs> YouTube comments, man, you, you're rolling the dice on that. I'm just, I'm just going to be honest with you. You're rolling the dice on that. That might make it, that might not. So just don't bank on that. But you can also use Twitter. You can. Because you and, might uh, remember I guess, last uh, week. Dementor. Uh, yeah, man. Yes. <laughs> Jellyfish. I had a bunch of people throw back. Because it's like, yo, man, I went to the web zone. And we were talking about it. And I was like, uh, don't see an Android app. To which everyone here on this show was like, yeah, I don't see an Android app either. Because it wasn't. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> then Jellyfin. <laughs> they're like, yo, sorry about it. What was Jellyfin, Pedro? Let everyone keep, get everyone back up to speed. On uh, that. Jellyfin was the uh, Plex sort of style media server thing mm -hmm. that we yeah. talked about last week. And uh, yeah, the you brought up it's like, oh, where are them Android apps? Because mm -hmm. that's like the one advantage that Plex still has. And you know Well, what? apparently they were there. <laughs> well, no, they weren't. Uh, the client downloads were not on the page because of yeah, a design change the to the back end. They're going to get it sorted. You know, ah, we, all right. we do have the apps. <laughs> that is a thing to which it's like you might because, hey, man, that. That's like definitely one of my barriers to entry when I go to the download page and I, I'm not searching external sites, you know, for mm -hmm. to whether or not you have apps and I'm not picking on Jellyfin. This is across the board. I would expect the same thing if I had something I'm like, well, I totally had this thing on GitHub. Why didn't you Google search? I'm like, really? I wouldn't ask that of anyone. <laughs> so that's going to get. Oh, let's see if it fixed. Oh, uh, Docker, <laughs> generic, Mac, went portable, wait, dot .NET, maybe? Not there yet. Not no, there yet. Not, not yet. <laughs> I guess you're working you can on. find them. Uh, you can find them on the Play Store. Mm. If you go to the Play Store, it's there. Yeah, they are there. <laughs> Search for it. One thing I'd yeah. like to see, here's, here's an easy case for it. I'm glad that you uh, lot are going to be adding it back, is to make sure because if i search for it on the play store there is a larger than zero chance that i might download the wrong thing from a bad actor mm -hmm. versus it being linked directly from the website taking me directly to the correct thing that i should be getting in the first place mm, yeah hmm. yeah no the, much like you i went to their downloads but it's like yeah no there's no android <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. all right uh that is gonna do it we're gonna roll the credits and get out of here but uh we will see you next week we gotta bring up some music <clears throat> there it comes that signals the end times for this podcast <laughs> yes <laughs> <laughs> yay <laughs> oh, we love our all our Executive producers and producers, but our new advisor, Haplo. Yay! Haplo gets to advise us. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Basically, if anything wrong happens, blame Haplo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Haplo. And me and Steve husband just sent him a big package full of lots of goodies from scale. <laughs> and uh, it was our... Nice. Um, 
<laughs> or thank you for for being our advisor. <laughs> Yeah. Yay. We survived Rack. another one. Yes. We're about a hundred out from Pi. Three point one four. Bye bye.